Okay, we're out in the rain with Woodford, nice golden doodle. Now, Woodford has really surprised me over the course of the month. Uh, when he first got here, he didn't have much attention span, much impulse control, uh, kind of struggled with his proprioception or his body awareness, okay, and really what what was the hardest part with Woodford is he just wasn't very naturally confident. And uh, now, at the end of the month, he's really doing great. I think we got another week or so to go with him being here, but I'm very happy with uh, the progress that he's made. And I want you guys to understand that the progress that this dog made came via this system, just just employing the system. Well, I mean, what am I doing right here, okay? Dog's on my left side, they're slacking my leash, and I'm rewarding situationally appropriate behavior, right? Okay, now, so I would bring Woodford out and I would put him in all the situations where he'd get a little bit nervous, like especially with people coming. People would come when they first started trying to, to, to walk down the hill, they would bark at him, or if they went to pet him, he would, uh, you know, pee, and he'd pee all over the concrete. But then over the course of the month, as, you know, I would hand the leash to people, and whenever he would just be calm, attentive, and polite, I would reward him, and next thing you know, he likes it when you hand the leash to people. So then we started thinking about how we're going to modify our perfection drill. Woodford's owners go to the lake a lot, and so they're in social situations. So when they call their dog, they're probably going to be talking to somebody face to face, so we don't want the dog to come sit right in front of them. We want the dog to jump right into the service heel position, okay? Just makes for a better social facilitation. So when we went from rewarding situationally appropriate behavior on the leash to working on teaching our actual leash manners, we worked with uh, Let's Go. And then when I called Woodford, come, oh my gosh, I called him right into the service heel position, which is also my preferred method, uh, you know, for my own dogs, because I also am always talking to people. Now, I'm not doing it in a social context, I'm doing it at work, but uh, either way, this is just a very convenient dog way, place for dogs to end up when you call them if you have to talk to people a lot. Okay, and then to uh, further address his confidence issues, we just got out here and we put in lots of work on the exercise with small challenges course. Now in the beginning, you know, Woodford wasn't very sure footed and uh, we had to really load him up on the treats on every obstacle. Okay. But over the course of time, his natural athleticism started to come out. And you say, well, Stoney, if he was naturally athletic, why did he struggle in the beginning? He struggled in the beginning because he just didn't have a lot of life experience, number one, with doing those type of activities. But number two, he didn't have a lot of confidence. And so you can be good at something, you know. I mean, a lot of people are good at things, but you put them in front of a lot of other people or in situations where, you know, there are some physical conditions that make them nervous. They can't perform up to their potential. And a whole lot of my job is just helping dogs unlock their natural potential, which is why this is one of my more, uh, my, uh, one of my, like, the cases where I really enjoy doing this uh, month. Easy. Very nice. Oh my gosh. Now you'll notice there's a little bulldog running around behind me, but he's running around because we're really just trying to like let him learn by doing, okay? I got a like, you know, those bulldogs are a special they, they take a they take a like a like a little special approach to to helping them learn. You can't force the learning on them. You have to just help them learn. Very nice. But again, confidence issues this little bulldog here, when he first got here, his owners literally picked him up and carried him through the gate. Anytime he's nervous, they would just pick him up and like love on him. And the effect that has on a dog uh, is exactly the opposite of the effect that the owners would like for it to have. So basically what happens is the dogs learn that uh, the more needy they are, or the less competent they are, the more attention they'll get from their owners. And that's a, that's a, that's a real struggle to overcome for the puppy. Wait, very nice. But look, Woodford's really paying attention well. Now what I'm going to do over this next week that he's here is we're really going to start to... Okay, scoot over, dude. Now, I had to be very careful with these bulldogs because they look kind of strong, but <laughs> they're real head heavy. And so if they fall off or jump off of things, it's a catastrophe. Uh, but over this next week, what I'm really going to focus on with Woodford is fading away from the treats and then putting him in lots of physical situations where he's uncomfortable. I'm gonna show you something that's kind of weird. This dog is a good swimmer. Like he likes to swim, been in the water since he was a, like a little. And uh, whenever it's raining, he doesn't really like to be in the rain. He hates the thunder. But like when he goes to come down this slide, uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but water collects at the bottom of the slide. And sometimes, like, uh, you know, I'll get it away just because I don't want it to splash on my socks. But most of the time, what I'll do is I'll take a dog and I'll make them walk through it. And you say, well, Stoney, why would that be a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because dogs don't see things from the same perspective that you see things. You know how when we're working on the tire, they see the tire hole, like this hole? I call it the hole of death. That's because dogs really try hard to avoid it, you know? Well, they really try hard to avoid this water at the end of this slide, okay? And so I want to use this as a situation where I can 
say, hey, listen, I'd like for you to do something. The dog looks at me and says, Tony, that's too dangerous. I can't do it. And then I, I kind of make them do it so that they understand if I ever think something's a good idea, that it's a good idea. And after we stack enough successes of me being right, they'll just assume that I'm right and they will draw their confidence from my confidence. So watch. Easy. Come on, dude. I'm just going to reach down here so he can't hop off the slide and walk him right through it. And I'm going to pause. You see how he tried to jump through there? Just pause right in there. Now, this right here, you see I'm using the same hand I use when I'm teaching the stand. Okay, It's very important that the dogs learn to respond to the leash pressure, the collar pressure, the hand placement properly. That's going to pop up a lot of times in your life. Easy. Up, up. Very nice. Wait. Good dog. Up. Wait. Let the cameraman get in position. Good. Easy. Good. I'm gonna, he's a big dog, but I'm going to try to throw a weight in it to, into this barrel. Wait. Dang. Very nice. Let the cameraman get in position. Okay, guys. So now we're going to go over a stand sitting down. Uh, we had uh, some microphone problems. The water blew into the microphone and it stopped working. Uh, but just to end up what we're talking about with Boone, okay, it's very important if you have a golden doodle to get them in the habit of getting on an elevated surface and uh, being calm, attentive, and polite, right? With the golden doodles, it's especially important that uh, you do your cursory physical examinations every day because uh, they have little curly hairs that grow in their ear and then they have uh, tight curly hairs that grow around the edge of their ears. And what that does is it retains heat and moisture in a hot, uh, moist environment. And it's a prime place for yeast and bacteria to grow. Okay, so every day if you have a golden doodle, you wanna look in their ears, okay? They also have the type of hair that um, kind of traps particulate matter around their eyes. So you always wanna look in here, keep all this trimmed up well, okay? Teeth. Teeth are very important from a developmental standpoint. Keep an eye on their gums, make sure they haven't picked something up. Got a splinter. Uh, go down their spine, privates, every joint, every toe, their belly, and their chest. Okay, now you also want to, after your exam, go ahead, practice having them stay still. Now we're practicing in the rain. I, I suggest that you practice in the rain at least every once in a while. You might say, well, Stoney, it's not gonna be raining in the vet's office. No, but there's gonna be other stuff going on, right? There's going to be crazy smells, there's going to be dogs and cats making weird noises, there's going to be plenty of stuff going on. And since you don't have access to all that, you do have access to the rain. Very nice. Okay, now, we'll get this guy down if we can, again. Okay, now, so, another thing that you want to think about is you might be wanting to have an extended conversation or you have to wait uh, for your vet. So, it's okay to let your dog sit on the table and sit. So, you want them to be comfortable sitting on an elevated surface. Stay, practice walking in and out of the room. Very nice. Now again, we're doing this in uncomfortable uh, conditions, okay? That's very important. You might have to change a tire on the interstate. Lots of reasons to practice in the rain. Most important reason for this particular dog is because initially he just thinks he can't do it. And I show him, dude, you can do lots of things. You just have to put your mind to it, you know? And I'm teaching him to take his cues from me. I'm standing out here in the rain and I'm doing my work. And I want him to stand out here in the rain and I want him to do his work. Now, surprisingly enough, this bulldog keeps <laughs> wanting to get up here and do work. And he's getting in the way of me doing my work. Okay, so the last thing we'll work on out here in the rain. Okay, and you can do this. You don't have to do it all in one session. It's best to break up your stand sitting down into separate sessions. Okay, we come out in the rain and down. Now, you're going to struggle with down in the rain. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you about that because the dog doesn't want to put its chest uh, and belly down in the wet like that. Okay, so like if you're going to, you know, you're going to have trouble with something, it's going to be the down. And so when you go to do the down, be ready to be a little bit more firm, a little bit more of a disciplinarian, and be ready to come in and pay a little better. Okay, but look at what we've done right there. We've uh, come out and we've used our normal system, okay, uh, to build confidence in the dog. And then, since this dog needed a little bit more confidence building, we just take and we run the normal system, but under uh, a set of harsher environmental uh, conditions so that the dog learns that they can perform regardless of what's happening in the environment. And that's ultimately where confidence comes from, guys, is getting out and stacking successes. So for you guys who have the less, you know, the dogs that aren't quite as confident like Boone or like Woodford, 
uh, it's even more imperative for you to put them into situations where they get to be a little nervous and they get to overcome it. If you try to overcome the nervousness for them, all you're doing is creating a very fearful dog in the future and you're interfering with that dog's ability to express their full potential. Okay, all right, give me another dog. 